Good afternoon, everyone. Today we celebrate the vigil of the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This weekend, there will be a special collection for the St. Vincent de Paul Society, which provides financial help to the poor. Thank you for your generosity. We also continue to remind you to please turn off all electrical devices. And also, we'd like to ask you to please place your ballots in the regular collection. This mass is being offered for all of us and our families, and especially for Mary Ross Marriage, Judge Patrick Schott, Jack Tawanta, Marilyn and Joe Allard, Sue Finnegan, John Siciliano Jr., Pat Miller, Beverly Luther, Carlos Gutierrez, Grace Ladd and the Stagali family, Nanette Barnett, Sal Marino, Ron Cole, Lucy Calder, special birthday month intentions for Rita, and special family intentions and special intentions for Ryan Curtis Baker. Our gathered plan to be found in the red gathered bundle, number 741, number 741. All are welcome. Let us all rise as we lift up our voices to the Lord. If you look up to the pews, you will see this paper for the nomination. Please circle three people in the uh, paper for the nomination for this year with the Paris Council. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brother and sister, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brother and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grave fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all time, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry our good works. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I also know how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. We do with a short call for the Gospel today. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent all the servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calf and fatten cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroy those murderers, and burn their city. Then he said to his servant, The feast is ready, but those who were invited was not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servant went out into the street and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall were filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven might be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast to his son. Our scripture reading today offers us a standing invitation to the everlasting joys in the heavenly banquet and a lovely warning to stay ready always for this heavenly banquet by constantly wearing the wedding garment. Wearing the wedding garment means that we need to live out the gospel message. We are called to live with the moral and ethical values 
embodied in Jesus' life and in his teaching. In other words, these wedding garments refer to the true discipleship rather than uncommitment membership. Regarding to our reading today, Isaiah, in the first reading, described the Messianic banquet on the Lord Mountain in the holy city of Jerusalem, which Yahweh is preparing for his people. It is the good news as it was a great feast of rich food and choice wise. But at the same time, for the children of Israel, it was the bad news for Yahweh, as Yahweh invited all people, including the Gentiles, to the banquet. Then in the second reading, St. Paul advised the Philippians to put their trust in power and goodness of a providing God, who in Jesus has given his church everything his followers will need to participate in the heavenly banquet. Going to the gospel today, Jesus accused the Jewish religious and civil leaders for their rejecting God's invitation for the heavenly banquet, which was given to them through God's only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. They indeed reject this invitation by not listening to the good news from Jesus and by not reforming their life. This invitation was firstly given to Israel through the prophets, but the leadership at the time of Jesus have rejected the reality that Jesus was the fulfillment of all prophecy. They refused to accept God's invitation to righteous living given through John the Baptist and through Jesus Christ. God is inviting the sinner and the Gentiles for his banquet. And that is why Jesus is keeping the company of the sinner. This banquet deeply refer more importantly to the banquet in the heavenly kingdom. In talking about the banquet in the heavenly kingdom, there is a fun story about an old man who blamed his wife for keeping him too long for the life on earth. He lost a chance to enjoy the banquet in heaven earlier. He and his wife passed their life on us as someone killed them in a car accident. As they had been married for almost 60 years and always keeping in good health, they could not imagine that they end up their life in a car accident like that. During the last 10 years on us, the wife strongly considered to keep the husband in good health as she asked him to diet, only eat the healthy food and exercise daily. After they died, both of them came up into the heaven and reached the pearly gate. St. Peter took them to their mansion, which were decked out with a beautiful kitchen and a master bathroom jacuzzi and lavish birthday back breakfast. And then he asked, how much can we eat? Don't you understand? Peter replied, this is heaven. Everything is free. After this breakfast, they went to the clubhouse of heaven extensive golf grounds and saw the lavish birthday lunch. Well, where are the low fat and low cholesterol tables? He asked timidly. Peter replied, that is the best part. You can eat as much as you like, of whatever you like, and you never get fat and never get sick. This is heaven. He turned to his wife angrily and said, this is all your fault if you did not ask me to diet and eat healthy food and exercise daily. I should be here 10 years ago. <laughs> this is just a fun story, but it's, it's uh, the thing for us to consider about the banquet in the heavenly kingdom. Heaven is the happiest life, which we want to have it after we pass this life on us. 
In this happiest life, there always has such everlasting joys with the heavenly banquet. In order to enter this happiest life and enjoy with the heavenly banquet, God asks us to accept Him as our Lord and Savior. He calls us to dedicate our life to Him. As Christians, we are clothed with the baptism, with the garment, white garment. This white garment at the baptism represents the purity. When we grow up, we have been clothed with the spirit and teaching of Christ. As God, through the church, opened his arm widely to the sinner, the sinner can only accept his invitation to this relationship of mutual love by loving him and making effort to repent and change their life. Is it not enough for someone to say, I believe, and then simply continue living his life in his accustomed, sinful way? God always calls us out of any evil sin. He asks us to live in his light and wear the wedding garment at all times. Those wedding garments are the garments of penitence, faith, reverence, and love to God. Let us keep wearing them in holiness, righteousness, and the gain in the state of grace, in doing good for others. As we have received the wedding garments of sanctified grace in baptism, we continue to receive the other sacraments to strengthen our faith and help us to avoid many temptations from the evil. Our participation in the Eucharist celebration and family prayer daily also help us to recharge our spiritual battery and enable us to fill our spiritual life. Participating in Holy Mass is the best preparation and greatest source of power for our future participation in the heavenly banquet. Now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was connected of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified at the heart of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the love and mercy of God, we bring our prayers and needs to the Lord. As we celebrate Respect Life Month this October, may our nation grow to value the dignity of every life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord as we hear scandalous details about clergy, sexual abuse, and sexual misconduct, may God bless all victims of clergy abuse and bring healing to the wounded body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah. For all the poor, sick, addicted, or hurting in our community, that they may experience God's help 
and healing through our prayers and good works. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Pope Francis' prayer intention for the month of October, that by the virtue of baptism, the laity, especially women, may participate more in areas of responsibility in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have been damaged by hurricane this season, that they may get the help and resources needed to rebuild. And through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, may we be spared the loss of life and property damage during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who have died, and especially for Rosemary Bailey and Dan Stapp, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We now pause to add our own intention in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Please join in saying our prayer to end coronavirus and family prayer, which are on the yellow sheets in the pews. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Guide resources to develop a vaccine. Be with the leaders of our nation. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, and sorrow. Grant us your peace. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus. For you are our loving and healing Lord. Our Lady of Prom Sucker, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, St. Rosalie, pray for us. Amen. Our family prayer. Loving and faithful God, through the years, the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayer and love of Our Lady of Promsucker in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, and Mary, our Mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Sucker, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette Galil, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Let us all sing together song number 23 in the red Number 2, 3, Shepherd me, O God.
praise my brother and sister that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with a sacrificial offering that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience, and so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exhortation, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created. Rightly give you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the blessing of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostle and glorious mortals, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pure church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop, the order of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind wisdom to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the same command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless this idol called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us all sing together our communion song, which is found in the red gather hymnal, number 512, number 512, Christ be our clients. We have a few announcements. Tomorrow, some parishioners of our parish will represent us to pray for an end of abortion in front of New Orleans Abortion Clinic on General Hersey Street from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Please come to join and pray with them for an end of an hour's 
uh, between 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can pick any hours to come and join with them to uh, pray for an end of the abortion. We have a Paris Bereavement Ministry for those grieving the death of a loved one. This ministry meets two times every month. In this month, they will meet in this Thursday, October 15 at 6.30 p.m. and in the following Tuesday, October 28 at 12 noon. If you experience any lost loved one, please come to this group to experience the spiritual support from them. Next Sunday, October 18, we will have a free meal to go instead of having a Paris picnic. This free meal to go will be hosted by the KC member at Main Club Council. 500 free dinner with red bean, rice, and fried chicken will be distributed on best place in front of our school building between 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. This is for parishioner only, and meal only be given to people in vehicle. Thanks to the KC and Man Club for hosting and make, making those 500 meals for our parishioner. Again, it will be from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m next Sunday, October 18. We still have a few your sign for love line amendment. If you would like to have a sign, please come by the Paris office and get one for you. Our areas of chapel still have a few hours open for committed elders. Please see the sign of this near the chapel and sign up for one hour. Uh, please contact Daddy Watson or call the Paris office also. And uh, if you did have the chance to uh, Put your vote on this paper. This paper is available in the field. Please pick it up and circle three names you would like to vote for the Paris Council member and give to the usher after Mass. Please stand for a final prayer and a blessing. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which come from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his, his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Amen. And as we look forward in peace, let us all sing together the routine. Blue hymnal, it's the Blue Spirit and Song hymnal, number two. 